outdoor unit was running it was frozen solid so I came inside to check the blower the blower is not running so I got my meter turned it to volts AC and I go right here and I check from my common to my call for my fan okay and right there I got my meter leads on CNG 25 volts and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check where that black wire is on that cool terminal I'm gonna check from that wire to the neutral should have hundred and twenty volts let me do that right now all right we're gonna go from here all right to right up here all right what's the meter say zero all right so that's why our blower motor is not running because it's not getting any power so we got to replace this board let's get a new board got a new control board here it says this is a universal electronic fan timer so this should work look at all those goodies wiring harnesses and my most favorite the instructions screws and zibard There's where our low voltage connections are. Common, green for the fan, yellow for the cooling, W for the heating, R and C make up the 24 volts. Then we've got our fan speed on the cooling so that the fan will energize in the cooling operation. And then there's the, once one of the speed wires goes on the heating terminal and it'll energize the fan and heating, this board will. And then you've got the incoming power, L1, that's one side, and then neutral, the other side. All right. And then this goes to your gas valve, I'm assuming. And it's right here. It's a smart valve. And that's why it's got these wires here. And it controls the pilot tube assembly, the pilot and the spark igniter and the flame sensor. So... Let's get this new board installed. Got some tools, flathead Phillips extension with a Phillips bit. Got my crimping tool just in case I need it and then also cut wires with this. And then we're gonna check the voltage when we get done. Got my drill, got my drill back, yes. I like to just jerk all the wires off and then try to figure out where each wire goes. But instead of doing that, you can actually just take the screw that holds this board to this plate off and then you can screw the other board where this board goes and then you can take a wire off at a time and that's the easiest way but if you're like me you'll just jerk all the wires off and you've got a question then hey look at the schematic we got a schematic let me know in the comments below if you need help reading schematics I can do a video in depth about it and I can help all right, so we had a screw that was on the top and on the bottom. And that's what we got for this one. Screw on the top, screw on the bottom. All right, let's put the other board in place. All right, plug that goes to the gas valve first. Boop. And then our neutral wire. All of our neutral wires. This one's for the fan, but we're gonna pull them all off here. Make sure that if you do pull them off, when you slide them back on, the new uh, male spades, where they're supposed to go, that they're not loose. If they are loose, take some pliers and uh, squeeze the end of the female spades that you're pulling off of this board and make sure that they have a good bite. Make sure they're nice and tight. Like that, that one's super tight. I can barely get that off. All right, these are the unused fan speed wires. They go on the unused terminal right there. And then if you can't get it off there, remember, get you some needle nose. I would try to choose the easiest route possible. All right, this is L1. 
one of these wires comes from the door switch and the other wire comes from the transformer all right Boop. all right now we've got our cool and heat wires looks like they're using the medium high and the high speed high speed goes on the cooling terminal cool terminal for the fan from the fan all right, let's see here come on you can do it cool there's heat now all we got left is our common and our C and our R coming from our secondary side of our transformer and this is what this is where our 24 volt power comes into the board all right so we've got this and this now all we got left is it looks like a plug and then our 24 volt wiring. And th these two wires go to the C and the Y. And this is what energizes our contactor coil uh, outside. This is our outdoor unit uh, control voltage. This is our thermostat control voltage. All right. So we're just gonna take and there's C and Y. Looks like they're using the blue wire for the Y. So interesting. Must have batteries in the thermostat. Pull those all off there. All right. Put them, oh, gotta open these terminals up here. Alrighty. Looks like this board is the exact fit that I need. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, this is how you change a control board. All right, make sure that's in there. We'll get the other wires. Um, there is no other wire that goes to common, but there is a wire that goes to the Y, and they chose the blue wire much easier to do it this way or just take a picture of the old board with your phone that works too take a picture so you know exactly what you got to do especially on install when you do a change out some of the guys will take pictures of the thermostat wiring so that they know exactly what wire went where Sorry, this is taking me so long, I didn't loosen up the screw. You have to loosen up the screw. And if you do not, it is because you are stupid. Don't be stupid. Loosen the screw. Hope you like my voice over here. It's a beautiful one. Old board here, and the new board. That did not take long at all. And the part number for this was, looks like the old one was ST9120U. Hmm. The new one is ST9120U. I bet you this board's been replaced. This is probably not the original board. So I should be able to just take this plug they've got here. We'll look at the manual here in a minute. Check out my videos, HVAC tips for technicians. If you need help, look at that. What am I going to do with this? <laughs> Got some dip switches that need to be set. One through five, they're all on the off position right now. How do you know? It says it right beside delay and it points up for on. So let's see what that means in the manual. All right, here's the page we need to look at. We got one through five. The first three are for heat. The last two are for cool, okay? Go right here, it says, the first one is if it's off, it's a 30 second heat on delay. And if it's on, then it's 60 seconds. Heat off delay for the next two and number three dip switch settings. And you can see it's just a delay basically. When the unit shuts off in the heat mode, how long do you want the blower to run? 
and then you've got cool on delay and cool off delay so you're controlling the timing for the blower and I think that I'm gonna leave it, leave it in the off position and leaving it in the off position gives it the looks like the shortest uh, delays I don't want much delay although if your ducts not sized correctly you just shorten the life of your heat exchanger and you cause more rust because you got more heat you don't get rid of that residual heat so I did not install this equipment I don't think so I'm just gonna leave it as is it's pretty old and check the file and see if this board has ever been replaced by us and find out when got to make sure that you don't have parts that are going out um, more than they should so because there could be a cause got to find the cause you can't just take care of the effect you got to take care of the cause all right let's plug it in something clicked blower's back on let's check the voltage Oh yeah, got some water right here it looks like, and it looks like we've had some water running down. Need to make sure the drain's not stopped up and that the unit is not freezing up. So let's go plug in the outdoor unit. All right, this is the condenser that I found frozen solid with ice all the way up the line set. So the first thing I did when I got to this job was I unplugged the disconnect. So let's plug it back in, see what the charge looks like. Sure that's good yeah it's in there okay looks like a r22 unit that's probably what it is got my gauges and my temperature probes hooked up 55 and 255 oh yeah gotta turn it to r22 R22, Super Eat 37, Subcooling 35. Let's wait a little bit and not get stung. Oh, got a couple wasps that just came out of the corner. Oh gosh, there's two more. <laughs> Goodbye. If you've ever used coil cleaner to take care of wasp, you're a true technician. By the way, this is really good coil cleaner. No, this is not a commercial, but Man, did you see that? Wow. That was close. First I had one fly flying in my face and now I had to get some more. Woo! Be careful out there, my technicians. Superheat is nine. Subcooling is 26, so 63 and 240. Pressures look pretty good. And the uh, temperature on the vapor line is 44. Temperature on the liquid line is 88, so that is a 40 degree difference 43 degree difference that's awesome I'd say the charge is good how you doing how you doing sorry didn't want to do that but had to charge looking good all right we're good to go if you don't know how to charge an air conditioner, check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. I've got a few videos on how to charge, superheating and subcooling. So, get you some.